As you know, you've got 15 minutes. After your presentation, you'll have a seat and we'll ask you some questions. Okay. Uh, actually, you can put this here so you don't oh, have yes. to Thank you. run back and forth. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you can start now. Okay, good evening, teachers. Uh, this is my presentation for my research. The name of the, the research is the social and subject perceptions of students on their intrinsic motivation to participate in writing tasks in an adult EFL context. So to give you uh, some context here that you need to understand what is motivation first. Okay, motivation is the <clears throat> what drives people to conduct in certain uh, actions or to do certain things. So in order to know this, to understand this, political and the political background. <clears throat> so the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organizations, or UNESCO, uh, uh, state that motivation can be achieved through the use of mobile devices because uh, these uh, have um, uh, flexibility and possibilities to students in order to enhance their learning processes. As for the social background, we see that Rasavi states that um, in, rather than the reasons uh, of engaging certain uh, actions, it's more important to create identity within students rather than the reasons of why engaging in these actions. <coughs> Moving forward to the empirical background, we see that Ahmed in 2014, citing Dornier from 2005, says that uh, motivation is a process engaged by a need and followed by an individual's behavior towards achieving a goal, as I stated before. And the theoretical background in, in, work, in Brown's 2007 words uh, says that motivations are acts that are driven under specific contexts and environments. So, all, in, all this taken into account, uh, and the, um, the previous and the, the title of this research, leads us to the uh, statement of the research problem. The research, research problem was identified in the in the practicum of the in this term that was carried out in the University of Santo Tomas in a basic English two level, where 24 students attended the cl classes and they were from five different programs. Okay, so the classes were from 9.30 to 10.50 and what caught my attention here there was no clear perception on what the students thought of their motivation was. So I asked myself, why do they study? Is it for the grades? Do they want to become better uh, as persons or do they want to uh, have a better curriculum for in their career? So uh, this led me to the efficiencies in knowledge as taking into account the theory uh, stated before. So the theory did not attempt to uh, answer about the perceptions of the students, but rather which uh, motivation choose or to foster inside the class. So this led me to the research question. What are the social, cons social constructed perceptions of students on their intrinsic motivation to participate in writing tasks in an EFL context? So from this question, uh, general and specific objectives arose. The general uh, uh, objective <coughs> is to interpret students' socially constructed perceptions on the intrinsic motivation in the same context as I said before. And in order to do this, I had to observe students' participation in writing tasks, categorize those uh, per uh, perceptions, and then analyze intrinsic motivation. Um, from these um, uh, questions, research assumptions arose also. I thought at the beginning, okay, is the research question is going to be answered at right away or something else is going to happen? So I first thought that um, the student's per uh, perception about their intrinsic motivation was negative or low because uh, they were not uh, engaged because they thought the content uh, might be not connected to what they need. And secondly, because uh, the need of the, the extrinsic motivation was higher than the intrinsic one because they needed to achieve high, higher grades in order to pass the course. So from this, the contributions of this research uh, would be to have um, actual information on students' perceptions, uh, to foster intrinsic motivation, um, to adapt the content of the classes if needed, and to avoid extrinsic motivation because that, because that doesn't um, uh, fit the purpose of the study and modify the educational system if the, if, if, if the answers and the data show that it didn't work. 
Okay, theoretical framework. Here you need to understand what are the four types of motivation that I, uh, that I encounter. First, the intrinsic motivation, which is, which is the, um, the f engaging in actions that are driven by personal or internal satisfaction, not any reward from the outside. Extrinsic, in, from the other side, is reward, reward from the outside, doing things for rewards, or like grades in this context. Integrative motivation is to become part of the culture, in this case, the English-speaking culture. Then, instrumental motivation is to know the language in order to have a professional career which is um, uh, in, 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 instrumental motivation is to use the language to to enhance your curriculum. EFL classroom is the classroom where English is taught, but not as the mother tongue, but as the second language. And writing task, which is writing, but in several stages. This is or uh, uh, this is according to Dornier, the, mo the internal and external, uh, intrinsic and instrumental motivation. EFL is according to the Oxford University, and writing task is according to O'Neill and Grabois. Okay, then we go to the methodology. <laughs> First, the paradigm. Okay, the paradigm is an interpretative interpre interpretive research because I need to understand how members of a community think and feel. The approach is um, <coughs> it's a qualitative approach because it's focused on the participants and not on, on numbers, it's on their ideas, and it's to explore a phenomenon. The design is a narrative design because I, I try to tell a story about what, uh, with the information retrieved from the, um, from the participants, <clears throat> in order to create a and to reconstruct a situation. Okay, the procedure I follow. First, I need to observe in order to understand the phenomenon. Then, I record feelings <coughs> regarding this phenomenon. I created an interview and apply the interview. Then, I transcribe the interview. <coughs> I triangulated the data, the data and I got results. From the interview, you need to know that, and the field notes, you need to know the subjects and key informants. From the field notes, 24 students participated, the whole class. I observed the whole class. But the interview, only six participants were, uh, were interviewed, which is a 25% in order to ensure trustworthiness. Trust um, this 25% uh, of students, or six students, were selected by a raffle or random selection. And they could be from any program, and they only had to answer six open questions, so they could go on as much as they want. <clears throat> okay, uh, as I said, I said before I had two uh, research materials, which are field notes and interviews. The field notes are aimed to collect the data as from the scenario and the participants as, as they happen, according to the research problem. And the interviews are um, a sharing of ideas between two people, which is the interviewer and the interviewee. These both um, Materials are defined uh, by Hernandez Fernandez and Baptista, 2014. Okay, uh, proposed data analysis techniques. I use um, categorization matrices in both field notes and interviews. And here is an example of the field notes. So we have the category which is motivation, the bigger one. The information that I, that I collected was the students asked for more material to improve his language proficiency without being told by any teacher. So this subcategory is related to intrinsic motivation for the sake of their own good. Nothing external is, is the set present. So the goal is I am, which stands for intrinsic motivation. As for the interview, I use the same categorization matrix. <coughs> but in this case, the interviewee was uh, the first category and the information that he provided, he or she provided, was al principio quería que me aprender, pero después era para salvar el ramo. So here we need to be uh, very specific because here it has two kinds of motivation. First, it talks about intrinsic, the sake of own learning, and then he talks about um, extrinsic, said passive uh, such. So it was complicated to find a copy of coding, but I found there was the, the student's perception towards the motivation, so what they thought. So SPTM would be the, the code. 
Then, in the triangulation matrix, I put together the both um, codes, and the category that emerged was intrinsic motivation. And the conclusion that I got was, it can be stated that students inside the classroom might want to engage in written activities because of internal reasons, but finally, end up studying and participating for getting a good grade and pass the course. So I mixed it up and I concluded that from there, the data that I got. Trustworthiness. According to Fernando, Fernando Fernandez Alotista, mm. okay, so credibility, which is to grasp the whole meaning of the, the data uh, retreat. So field notes are, in, I, are intended to do that, and also the transcriptions of the interviews, mm. because I had the opportunity to listen one time and again and again, as much as I needed in order to understand the whole meaning that they wanted to provide me. Transferability is uh, so applied in another context. So Therefore, I provide a thorough uh, description of the contents and its participants. So if they want to uh, try this um, research in another context, they have to, be, they have to pay attention to the, to the descriptions if they want to uh, obtain uh, similar results. Dependability, which is recorded in the changing um, conditions of the observations. Again, field notes and the transcriptions are uh, aimed to fulfill this because I, I could uh, go back in order to understand if something has changed from the first and the fourth field note or uh, between the interview E1 or 6. <coughs> Confirmability, which is to minimize their researcher's bias, which is something very difficult. Uh, so I, what did I, uh, did I do was to check understanding with the participants in the interview. Because uh, if something was not clear for me, I tried to ask the question again or paraphrase it in order to, for them to give me more information. So that bias was left aside. <coughs> okay, the findings. Uh, from the field notes, uh, it was possible to retrieve this. That students uh, were working because of the grade, which is extrinsic. The content was not useful for their uh, program, instrumental. Doing activities for extra points. Extrinsic again, study to get exempted from the exam, which is something very common. Extrinsic again, and live in or visit an English speaking country, integrity, asking for more material to learn, intrinsic, and this it was the only uh, intrinsic motivation entry that I found in the film notes. Uh, others were worried for the upcoming exam, which is extrinsic, and the study guides are similar to the exam to help students to pass which is also extrinsic motivation, because the reward is to pass the exam. As for the interviews, what they told me was that the content needed to be contextualized for their needs. So this is again instrumental. Some cared about learning, and others uh, studied because of the grades. So this was mixed up and was extrinsic and intrinsic at the same time. So they wanted to pass, but also they wanted to learn. <clears throat> they felt English necessary to meet other people, integrity, to meet other cultures and get the good grades makes you sentence from the exam and ensures you a good grade average. Again, extrinsic. And some stated that if the tasks are not graded, they did not feel the urge of doing it, which is again, extrinsic. Mm -hmm. So most of the results that I got from my field notes and the interviews were uh, um, from the extrinsic motivation spectrum. Okay, so did I answer with the research question? Partial. What are the perceptions on students' intrinsic motivation? Is very uh, there was uh, few information. They wanted to learn, uh, but they wanted to learn and at the same time get good grades. And the most important one was getting good grades and get exempted to pass the course. So my assumptions were, uh, at, as I said before, that they were driven because of the sake of their own grade. As I, I said before, the limitations here. I feel that uh, six students to get interviews you from uh, 24, I think that this could be, uh, um, the interview could be to all of them, but for time constraints I couldn't do it. Uh, the significance of findings, now that there is some information about the students' per, uh, perceptions, this could lead to a modification on the educational system. The contribution to the gap in knowledge is now that um, if uh, all the researchers want to uh, um, want to keep studying about the students' uh, perceptions, now there is some uh, background about it here in this context. And for future directions, 
not only intrinsic motivation is important, but all, all the four, as I said before. So the insights of the teacher as a uh, role as a researcher and a reflective practitioner. <clears throat> I think that uh, teachers are supposed to um, not only hand in the content, but they have to uh, make uh, students aware of critical changes that have, are happening in society. So they take this content and apply it to their own lives. As for the researcher, is to obtain information and to uh, be able to um, see a phenomena that is happening inside uh, this uh, classroom. And you, you, need, you need to be critical enough to, uh, to, uh, to, to think about how to improve this, how to change, how to, how to make people aware. As for my strengths, weakness, and challenges in the internship and in the research, I would say that I'd lo I would I love to be part of the class. I I think that my weakness is about uh, assessment, uh, rather the, uh, not not uh, the entire assessment, but um, summative assessment. I'm not as good as I would like to, because I think that I'm much more of a formative assessment teacher rather than a summative one. And challenges are as are they related to weaknesses. I would say that I need to uh, find a balance between them. And these are the references. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael.